We're at halftime at Nippert Stadium on the campus of the University of Cincinnati. The Cincinnati Bearcats holding a 17-10 over the lead over the Miami Redskins, and this is the 92nd meeting of the two schools. Miami, Miami got off to a very hot start uh, in this game, Greg Christopher, with uh, Chris Thomas scoring a touchdown in the first quarter after a 94-yard touchdown drive. We'll take one more look at that play. Watch Thomas here as he skirts the right side. He had scored a touchdown the previous play, but that was an offside. So that was the end of that. Now we come back as McCoy took his team downfield at the end of the first quarter. A 19-yard scoring pass here to Davis, Bill Davis. Right at the goal line, he gets nailed by Sheldon White, but gets in anyway. And then the other touchdown on the ground by Tackett, the backup tailback from four yards out. We also had field goals by Insulaco of UC from 27 yards out and a record-setting 53-yarder by Gary Gusman from Miami to give us that 17 to 10 halftime score. Now, UC, Greg, as we can see, really dominated things yeah. in that first half. The key stat to look at on this screen is at the bottom of the left-hand corner, look how much time Miami had the ball. Look how UC dominated it. They kept the ball for almost nine minutes longer than Miami did. McCoin, keep in mind, had about 380 yards or something in that nature coming into tonight's ball game. Look at what he's got so far this game. He had 382 coming into tonight's game, 213 already, and he had a tremendous game against uh, the Redskins at uh, Riverfront last year. Before the game, we talked about if the Bearcats were going to do anything this year, Dan McCoy was going to have to get on track, and it certainly looks like he has tonight. He's had a big first half, 15 out of 21 through the air. There was one interception, but that was not off of a pass by McCoy. It was off of one by Bill Davis, the wide receiver, trying a long halfback pass, which was intercepted at the goal line, cutting off a UC scoring drive. The Redskins, on the other half, have not put the ball up in the air as much. One good point, though, for Miami, 66 yards in first half rushing. As we have mentioned time and again, Miami's had a slow start this year with 157 yards total rushing in three ball games, so they're doing much better on the ground tonight. John Gist is leading the way. He's had 10 carries for 53 yards in this first half. Mike Bates, the quarterback, was 8 out of 13. Stofa had three catches, and Andy Schillinger had a pair for the Redskins. Tim Rose has got to be reasonably happy with his offensive performance, especially John Gist. Gist has had trouble in the first three games of the season getting acquainted. And now it looks like Gist is finally getting the hang of being a tailback, and he may do things from here on out. UC Band just finishing up its halftime performance, standing on the sideline. As you can see, the Bearcats coming back out onto the field. We saw Miami right there. As they get ready, we're moments away from the kickoff to start this second half of action. But Dan McCoy and the Bearcats have dominated tremendously in the first half. That's going to be a key factor here. My, really, UC has beaten itself more than anything else with an interception by, off that pass by Davis. Also a fumble one time that cut off a drive. So twice they have blown opportunities in Miami territory, or this score could be a lot worse than 17 to 10. They've had two or three drives where they've stopped themselves. Otherwise, as you said, this score would have been much higher. And one other drive, too, I can remember where McCoy fumbled the ball on a quarterback sack, and it was a play where, again, uh, they tried from the shotgun and had a bad snap from center. So they really killed off three different drives. The 99-year tradition of this ball game. Here is 1949. <laughs> you see beat Miami in that ball game, Greg. Believe it or not, right here at Nipper Field. And we're going to ring the bell here, which they do traditionally also, at the center of the field. This that was back in the days of black and white <laughs> television. This is the victory bell that goes to the winner of right. this game annually between UC and Miami. It used to hang in old Harrison Hall on the Miami campus. And it disappeared for a while, too, rumor has. <laughs> <laughs> the coaches for that 1949 game, interestingly enough, were Sid Gilman for Cincinnati and Woody Hayes for Miami. I think a few people around Ohio might know that name. Very familiar with both gentlemen as coaching greats. Gilman is still active, believe it or not. He just recently signed on as an assistant coach in Pittsburgh. And of course, Woody Hayes, uh, who died earlier this year, was honored at Ohio State's first home game recently also. But he, of course, was a coach at Miami years ago. 
So the Redskins are back on the field getting ready for the second half kickoff. They trail UC by seven points. We saw those differences in the halftime stats, and if Miami wants to get it back, they've got to cut down the time of possession of UC if they want to win this ball game here in the second half. Again, Miami got off to a good start with that long touchdown march its first time. We saw that happen, though, in the Eastern Michigan game also. They got off to a quick start and then deteriorated from there. It's going to be a key fact whether or not Miami can keep the ball. Not only because they need points, but also because if their defense has to stay on the field a whole lot, by the time the fourth quarter comes around, these guys are going to be run down, and UC with McCoy and company are going to be able to put some big points on the board. UC starting to deploy out onto the field. Miami still over on the sidelines as we get ready for the second half kickoff. UC uses several different kickers. They can use either Gary Overgaw, number two, who is going to do the kicking off, or Jeff Jones as a punter. They've both done punting this year. Phil Insolaco does most of the place kicking as far as the extra points and field goals, but Overgaw, as you see him out there warming up his leg for the second half, does the place kicking, or, or rather the kickoff. He has done it each time tonight in the first half, and we'll do it here to start the second half. So Miami will get the ball, and it'll be a key question how they can do on their first drive. If they can match their first drive of the ball game here to start the second half, they'll be right back in this thing. Maurice Nelson trying to get the Miami faithful up on its feet on the far side. He's number 21. He's one of the deep backs along with Chris Thomas. There's Nelson right there. And part of this big crowd at Nippert Stadium. We haven't gotten an official total yet. But as we said, not a, quite a full house. There are a few empty seats. There were 5,000 tickets still left going into game time, but I think they got rid of quite a few of those. I think there's easily over 20,000 here. So Overgaard getting ready to kick it off to Thomas and also Maurice Nelson. From the college, uh, just same as the pros, they kick the ball off from that 35-yard strike. You see Faithful making lots of noise as Overgaw moves into the ball and drills it down to Nelson at the four. Big wedge up the middle, spins it out to the outside. He's got two men to beat. Overgaw, the punter, or the place kicker, knocks him down at the 35. But a good return there by Nelson, a 31-yarder. Nelson and Thomas back there are a double deep threat for the Redskins. Nelson was one of only 11 freshmen to go to the California Bowl with the Redskins last year. Well, watch it here. He starts into the wedge, then sees daylight to the outside, cuts it out right here. He's got a couple of men to deep beat, including Terry Noble, who comes up there along with Overgaw. Noble hits him, and then Overgaw finishes him off. But it's first and 10 at the 35 for Miami. Great field position for our second half of action. Here's the pitch back. Costello. Good gain on first down of four or five yards. Mike Kelly was up there. Stewart also came up. Mike Bates is coming out of the field. Not a bad first half, no interceptions, but he is still looking for his first touchdown passing of the year. He's rushed for one touchdown, but 73 yards in the first half and a completion percentage of better than 60%. Costello got five on that first carry, so it is second down and five. He's in there with Chris Thomas, Costello is. And Bates wants to put it up. He's under pressure, throws it in the flat to Costello. It looked like he one-hopped it, and it was incomplete. So Art Sheffield was over on the coverage. So Bates misfires on the first pass of the second half. Looks like the left side of his offensive line just kind of collapsed there. And the defensive end on the right side of Cincinnati was able to break up Bates' vision, and thus the pass. Coin warming up on the sideline for UC, not yet with his first possession of the first half, but if Miami doesn't get a first down here, he soon will have his first possession. Third and five for the Redskins at their own 40-yard line, just underway in the second half as Bates looks to pass deep down for Schillinger, bobble the ball, and incomplete. Lewis was over there on the coverage. Sheffield also back there, but the incomplete pass, and Miami will have to kick it away. And once again here, Miami's getting into the same problem they had in the first half. Three plays and a punt. If this keeps up all night, their defense is going to be spending a lot of time out on the field. So Miami will have to punt it away. This time very little pressure on Art uh, Conrad as he gets the kick down, and I think it hit out of bounds. Not a very good kick that time. It goes out of the 28, so a short kick. 
only about 32 yards on that one. And UC will take possession first and 10. So Chuck Conrad has had some good punting going into the night's game, but not a very good kick that time. So far tonight, he's been averaging almost 45 yards a kick, including a 53-yarder. McCoy with a big, big first half. One TD pass. Gives him three on the season, and he had three TD tosses against Miami a year ago. That's the Danny McCoy of old. Ball at the 28 for UC as they start their first second half possession, and there goes the big man McKinney up the middle. He had 89 yards in the first half of action, and he adds to that total now as he's over 90. Andrew Marlatt and Jeff Happ were in on the stop. He pushed the ball from the 28 out to about the 31. Give him a pick up there. Actually, they spotted it about closer to the 32. It'll be second down and about six. Previous to tonight, Al McKinney had 144 yards against Louisville. That was his best effort. If he keeps this up tonight, he's easily going to break that. Got him now for 92 yards in the ball game. Second and seven. They gave him a gain of three. Right up the middle to Leonard Cry, the fullback. He bruises a couple of defenders and gets a couple. Pete Mather in there. There's a UC fan. He's excited a about the game. Rather young fan here for tonight's action. <laughs> Cry only got a couple out of that. Pushed it up to the 33. So it is third down and about five yards to go. Pete Mather has had uh, three tackles on tonight. Been in on three tackles. It's third down now and five yards to go. Coming down to the 13-minute mark of the third quarter with UC leading Miami. 17 to 10. Roosevelt Mukes, one of the wide receivers, flanked out to the near side. And here comes McCoy to pass. Under a little pressure, gets it behind Mukes that time. A bad pass, one of the few that he's thrown tonight. And so McCoy fails on his first effort, as Mike Bates, his counterpart, did. And you see, will have to punt the ball away. Sheldon White, who's the quickest defender in the Miami defensive backfield, had a great coverage on that play. Jeff Jones, the freshman punter, standing at his 20 to get this ball off on fourth and five. Andy Schillinger, the deep back, didn't have much success on his only punt return try of the night. He got sacked at, after no gain on his first try back at about the 15-yard line. That was on two different tries. Try, <laughs> yeah, really, two different ones. One was called back by a penalty. Miami trying to get through to the block it. They don't. Good kick. Schillinger back to about his 22. Looking for room, and he's having trouble. He's giving ground, and he loses about four. He just is having nobody back there. They're trying to go after the kick, leaving him all by himself, and he lost about three yards. Schillinger came up limping on that play, and he's, ooh, he's kneeling down over on the bench there. Not good news for Miami Redskin fans. I don't know if it's just a leg cramp or the knee. We'll see where he's hit. We can pick it up on the replay. He breaks it one way, then tries to reverse field, and there's a defender waiting right there for him, two or three, as a matter of fact. He's horse-collared. Can't see what happened exactly, but Miami has the ball in its own 19. Bates wants to pass. Swing pass to Gist. Good running room all the way up to the 27-yard line for John Gist. Tom Zabetis made the stop, but a good game for Miami on first down. Bates is 9 of 16 so far tonight. Give him out to about the 27-yard line. That's a pickup of 8 yards, and that was the third catch of the night for John Gist. Coach Rose over there talking with Bill Jowitz, one of his wide receivers, as he alternates him in and out with a lot of the play calls. So it's second down and two after that good gain by Gist on the swing pass, and they're going to pitch it to Gist this time. Spins off one tackle, He's trying to get up to the first down marker, but I don't think he got there. Art Sheffield made the stop. Also, Richard Rhodes in there. This play is what I'm talking about when I think John Giss is starting to get the feel of being a tailback. Instead of just running, and as soon as he gets hit going down with it, he's starting to put some moves in, starting to spin as he gets hit. Miami's had a good record in the last couple of decades, but they, it's not been since the late 50s that UC has won two in a row, and that's what they're trying to do out here tonight. 11 and a half minutes left, third quarter, still third and two as there was no gain on that play. Hits Gist again, and this time he will get a first down and driven out of bounds over on the far side. Rather make that Chris Thomas on the catch. Kelly and Noble drove him out, but it is good for the first down. 
Tim Rose looks like he's trying to stay within his game plan. He's not trying to go deep. He's not trying to get the seven points back in a real hurry. He's trying to stay within the game plan, the short passes and the running game, and try to get to the end zone. Thomas only got about four yards, but they only needed two, so it is first and ten. Ball at the 31. Miami's second possession of the second half. Gist and Thomas, the eye backs. Thomas is the down back there in the eye. Here comes Gist. He's got a hole, breaks it outside, 35, 40, 41, close to another first down. He's running very hard tonight. His best game of the season by far. Vaughn Booker has been in a busy man. He's had five stops tonight. But Gist had 78 yards coming into tonight's ball game. Great block right there in the center of the line. Gets some good blocks out in front of him there by Stofa. And got a first down. Picked up about 11 yards on that carry. They're going to measure for the first down here to see if the Redskins got it. See where they spotted close to the 42. That's about where he had to go to get the first down. I think they do. Yeah, he got it. 10 yards will give him. Gist, by the way, now. We mentioned 78 yards coming into tonight in three games tonight. 12 carries. 63 yards, better than a five yard per carry average. That has to make Coach Rose and his offensive staff happy to see the Redskins finally getting the running game on track because when you can do that, that makes Bates more effective passing wise too. They really haven't been alternating the tailbacks either like Rose had planned on doing. So the Redskins with a first and 10. Mark Matthews in motion. He's in there replacing Schillinger who is not back in after that punt return. Looping pass incomplete intended for Stofa, but well overthrown. So it'll be second down and 10 at the 42-yard line. Vaughn Booker, here's Schillinger still being attended to in the background on the Miami bench. We certainly hope it's not a serious injury to Andy. At the end of the play where he went down, it kind of looked like he got twisted yeah. as he was tackled. And I wonder if his ankle didn't get twisted and all of that. They're still working him over, so while they do, they have Mark Matthews as his backup into the ball game. Matthews has yet to catch a pass, though, this season. So it's second and 10, 10.51 left in the third quarter. Bates back to pass, got his man open. Complete out to the midfield stripe and all the way into UC territory. Chris Thomas with a big catch. I don't think he got a first down, but he did make it a big gain as Terry Noble drove him out. See officially where they spotted him out of bounds. It's at about the 47, so he might be close. There you see it. He swings out in the flat, beats one defender there, turns it upfield, and Thomas with a nice gain got close to the 47. And they say first down. So he picks up a good gainer there of 10 yards. Bates has now hit on 11 of 19 as he's got the Redskins moving into UC territory. Matthews in motion. Handoff, Gist again three or four yards up the middle. Mike Kelly, the inside linebacker, has had a lot of tackles tonight. Six or seven, he's been in oh, six, I believe, now. That's a trap play that didn't really develop on its own. The lineman pulled to the right, but Gist got the three or four on his own. They Bear have given up a lot of rushing yards, the Bearcats have. That's attributed to the front five of the UC Bearcats, and they're inexperienced. Like we said earlier, the three linebackers are all brand new in there. Second and seven. Ball at the 44-yard line for the Skins. Bates wants to put it up. Then a screen again to Thomas. He's got blockers in front of him. Cuts to the 40, down to the 35. Another first down. So they're swinging the ball out to the backs. Booker up on the stop again. And that's good for another 12 yards. Miami's going to take these short passes as long as the Bearcats give them. If they can keep picking up good chunks of yardage in each one, and you can why see not take them? Two of the offensive linemen right out there in front to lead the play. Nice block by Riley. Down to the 35, actually to the 34, making a gain of 13 yards. Thomas now with three catches all in this quarter. Good for 27 yards on this drive. Down to the 950 mark. Miami trying to go in for a tying touchdown. Bates under pressure, gets away from one. He's gonna bomb it to his mother or somebody else in the bleachers. He just threw that one out of bounds. <laughs> Stofa was somewhere in the vicinity. Within 20 yards. Within so. 20 yards. But that one hit the field goal net on the sideline. But you can see he, he's got two different blockers coming, or uh, tacklers coming after him there. Gets away from them both and then just says, the heck with this play, let's go <laughs> back and try it again. So it's second down and 10 yards to go. 940 left, 17-10, UC up on top of Miami.
Bates looking, got a man, first down. He hits Glenn Huffman, the tight end, his first catch of the night. At about the 22, should be enough for another first down. Miami, John Lewis got him. Miami has three tight ends that they like to use, Fumi, Huffman, and Kuzan. Of the three, Huffman and Fumi are used as pass-catching tight ends, and Kuzan is more the blocking tight. He got about 12 on that play, and now Miami's drive has reached the 22-yard line. They started back at around their own 19, so this has been a great drive. It gives the defense a rest. That's true. Mike Carlton, his first carry of the night, gets it down to about the 20-yard line, a pickup of a couple. So Carlton getting a little bit of action, giving some of the other regulars a little bit of a breather. So Carlton gets two. Rob Leshank, uh, Leshnack, rather comes in to make the stop at the 20, second down and eight. Carlton's from Buffalo Bill territory, Orchard Park, New York. And he only carried the ball three times all of last year. Second down and eight for the Redskins. They are at the UC 20, definitely in Gary Gusman field goal range, but they need a touchdown to tie it up here. Along with the Gusman extra point. Here comes the pitch to Gist. He's got a lot of blockers. 15, 10, 5, goodbye. John Gist, a 20-yard scamper for a touchdown. Down on the field, it looks like Kuzan, the blocker, was hurt uh -huh. the tight end. But uh, he gets up very slowly, but Art Sheffield tried to make the stop. Gist, boy, he had an escort and a half <laughs> on that play. It looked like he had all 11 Miami people out in front of him. Well, how can you not help but score with something like this coming at the UC defense? A thundering herd thrown at him and all the way in for the score. Sheffield made the dive and tried for the stop too late. If Gusman connects, it's a tie ball game. There it is, it's blocked. Gusman, point string is finally over. It ends right there. And at a most inopportune time, it had to end sometime and it ends right there for Gary Gusman. He had that string since his freshman year. Kelly apparently blocked it. It was just the front line blocking the collapse. And Gusman's streak wasn't just all by himself. That's a team effort the whole way. And here we'll see how it breaks down. Well, that leaves Miami still trailing by one point. John Gist with a beautiful 20-yard run, but the extra point was blocked. We'll check that streak and see what it ended at. I've, we'll have to double-check the number. But... The string is over there, you can see it. It's tipped and it goes up in the air and off to the side and well short. So it's 17 to 16, you see, and there comes Gary Gusman. He's got to be a bit dejected. I know he wanted to leave Miami with a perfect record and uh, keep that streak alive, but it finally comes to an end tonight. Through Miami University's Alumni Association, you can get a copy of this year's highlight tape. Plus, we've got highlight tapes from last year. A limited number available, so call the alumni office if you're interested. 8.33 to go in this third quarter. Miami trailing by a point now, and Gary Gusman will boom it off. Nice kick to the far side of the field. Hunter over there to the nine-yard line. He had a good return last time, gonna cut it back. He gets around Corn, gets around another tackler, up to the 20, up to the 25. Boy, he is hard to bring down. He went about 50 yards to get 20. So UC takes the ball back. Dwayne Hunter has been all over the place as a kick returner. Just some sloppy tackling here by the Miami special teams. You can see Hunter, he gets through two or three tacklers. They're just arm tacklers. and gets another 15 or 20 yards on his own. Got about a 19-yard return, but he ran from one side of the field <laughs> to the other to do it. So McKinney and Cry in there behind McCoy. His team up by one point. He's going to go down the middle, and he's got a man, his tight end. Huber on the reception from McCoy. Got that ball all the way out to the 45-yard line, 18 yards. Greg Wersch on the stop, but Huber with his fourth catch of the night. He and Sanders each with four receptions now. McCoy really looks like he's getting his confidence back. And a Danny McCoy that's got his confidence is definitely a dangerous quarterback. See if that blocked extra point fires up the UCers. They have first and 10. He wants a bomb here. He's got his man Sanders at the 35. First down. 20 yards on the out pass. And McCoy is heating it up now. He's got 
Sanders five times tonight for 99 yards. Greg Wirsch on the stop. That drive consumed 81 yards in four minutes. But unfortunately for Miami, the blocked extra point kind of takes the luster off the drive a little bit. Sanders is down. And the only reason Sanders is getting to play so much is because Joe Heiss is banged up himself. So UC receivers aren't that deep to begin with. If Sanders goes down now, McCoy may have to be start going to the running backs a lot more. Sanders has had a big night. Five catches for an even 100 yards. He came into the night with seven catches, so he's now up to 12 on the year. First and 10 for the Bearcats, and it hasn't taken them long to get where they are right now. McCoy's completed two passes in a row for big yardage. McKinney tried to cut outside, and he fell and went down on his own for about a three-yard loss. King was up there to help out just in case, but it was a big loss there, and it'll make it second down and about 13 to go. He had the right idea. He had a lot of turf in front of him, but just couldn't keep his feet. Loss of three, second and 13. Seven and a half minutes left, third quarter. Miami trails UC 17 to 16. Heiss in at one of the wide receivers, Davis at the other. Backs in the eye behind McCoin. And he wants to put it up again. Got some pressure coming from the outside. Gets away from one tackler. Still looking. He is bottled up and throws incomplete through it behind McKinney. And he's lucky to get that ball away. Fisher was all over him. Sanders is getting his leg checked there. I saw him hobbling as he came off. Seems to be walking a little better now. McCoy, by the way, is 17 for 25 in tonight's ballgame. That's nearly 70% of his passes. The but UC that, offensive line is really giving away passing attempts. If you watch them as they get up there, they are almost leaning completely back on just their hind two feet on any passing attempt. You can see right here, it's obvious, though, that it's a shotgun situation, though. He's got three wide receivers in there. Heiss, Davis, Mukes. Low snap. They've had trouble with the snaps to him. He gets some good outside pressure. Steps up. Round two man. Hit. Still getting loose. He's going to run the ball. But he's caught down at about the 34. So the Miami defense that time does a good job. And they flushed him out and made him run. Fisher was up there to help stop him. McCoy gets about three yards. But it's going to be a fourth and about ten. So he got back to the starting line of scrimmage where, he, where the series began. There you see him stepping around from Marlatt. McCoy's not Half mobile anyway. Yeah. He's got an injured knee, and he once again, he's no Fran Target. He's about as mobile as <laughs> Brian McClure was a few years ago. Well, it's going to be fourth down, and now we'll see if they do actually go for the field goal here from 52 yards. Last time, Gary Overgoff faked it from this formation. This time, he's going to try it. It's got the distance. No. He missed it. <laughs> So, a break for the Redskins. They'll get the ball back as they hold UC. So he missed about a 53-yarder. That was about the distance where Gusman put the ball up. Actually, about uh, 51 yards that time on the miss by Overgaw. So we have timeout on the field, 624. There's McCoin talking to the folks upstairs. Wish we could tap in on that <laughs> conversation trying to figure out what the problem is, trying to get the ball into the end zone. Well, he's got two touchdowns on the board, his team does, but they could have an awful lot more than what they do. 17 to 16, our score, UC over Miami in the 92nd meeting of these two schools. Here's a pass to Schillinger, incomplete. So he's back in the ball game, that's good news. John Lewis on the coverage. Bates just missed him a little bit, a couple times tonight on those long passes. Bates has just missed quite a few passes tonight, and I really believe that's because of the pressure UC is putting on. Let's watch it again here. Yeah, you can see it's a little too tall for Schillinger, and unfortunately, you also don't like to have your receiver uh -huh. up in the air extended like that with a uh, defensive back coming up at him. That'll put Schillinger out of the game real quick again. So it's second and 10, 6.20 left in the period. The UC staff talking things over. They only have a one-point lead after blocking a Gusman extra point that would have tied it. Here's the pass in the flat. Ducking a receiver, gets it up there. That's Costello all the way to 49. This little kid's exciting to watch. A freshman, and he's doing a great job out there. A 14-yard reception. Sabatis made the stop, but Mondo Costello with a good catch. Here we're going to see Costello. He breaks one tackle and gets outside and gets some more yardage for himself. He's so, he looks so small out there, but he is a he is 
couple times come real close to really breaking one free. Another time on a running play, a 20-yard run that he had earlier tonight, he almost broke it for more than that. So it's first and 10 up to the 49, and the Redskins are at it again. Here comes Bates. Got the man in the flat, Jawitz, but it's incomplete. Got an injured Bearcat down there. Looks like Leonard Cry, the fullback, being checked out, but he's getting up under his own power now. Cry is the starter this year. Took that spot away from Tackett, I believe. So it's going to be second down and 10 yards to go. 5.48 left in this third period. The Redskins trying to put the ball back in my into.